Hey there everybody, welcome back to another Blender Tutorial, New York edition. Um, I'm in the great city that never sleeps and there's fucking detail everywhere, it's like a big photogrammetry scan. Anyways, uh, in the last part we made a procedural barrel out of math. Why? We didn't question it, but we didn't make it. Um, and now we need to shade it. So uh, we're going to apply a bunch of materials here. We're first going to make a wood material for these planks and then one for the uh, top section and the metal section. And that should be it. Okay. Sound good? Cool. <laughs> so uh, let's start with the uh, plank material. So. Yeah, I need to find it in this fucking monstrous node group we made here. By the way, if you haven't seen part one, watch part one. Uh, that, that was the modeling. Uh, for the planks, it was just a bunch of instance on points. So if I can find the instance on points node, there it is, uh, then we can apply the material. So first thing I'm going to do, set material node. Uh, this needs to be applied in geometry nodes, otherwise it's not going to show up. So let's make a material for this. I'm going to call it planks and make sure that the set material node is using the planks material. This should make it so that when we change the color, it changes the color of the planks. Um, okay, so first thing I want to do here is I want to randomize the color of each plank and the way you might expect to do this is with a random per island node. But you're going to notice that all of the um, planks are the same color. Uh, this is because we've instanced um, but we haven't realized those instances. So it's actually applying a material to one instance, then copying it. Um, so of course it's all gonna be the same. To fix this, to remedy it, to find the cure to this poison, uh, we're gonna use a realize instance node. And now you can see each plank is randomized, which is cool, because uh, now we can make uh, one plank darker than the other um, and just apply a bit of randomness, as you can see. It, it already looks a lot better, uh, but what I want to really do in this part is make a nice wood material. And we're going to run into an issue. So the, normally the way I, I make a, um, as you saw, uh, normally the way I make a, a wood material is I just take a wave texture and kind of up the detail and up the distortion and add a bit of roughness. And you can see this kind of already looks like wood or like a watermelon rind. Um, but the issue is you can see we have these like circles here and this is because it's using the x-axis as a coordinate system. If we use the y-axis we run into the same issue and if we use the z it's vertical. And if you want it to be vertical that's fine but you can see the issue is we don't have any kind of coordinate system that's usable uh, for this because by default it's using generated uh, coordinates if we use normal coordinates. I mean I guess normal coordinates kind of work. Is that a nice hack for this? It kind of is, honestly, except for the uh, tops of these planks. So uh, normal coordinates seems to kind of work, but it does break at the top over here. So we're going to need to make a custom coordinate system. Uh, to do this, remember the planks are basically a quadrilateral. Um, so we did a, a curve to mesh. We took a filleted quad. Let's see where that is. Somewhere here. I think it's very tiny, yeah. We have this uh, filleted quad. And then we took our uh, curves and uh, basically curved to mesh them. In other words, uh, if we take one of these uh, things, right, we take the spline factor as we go up, and then we take the spline factor as we go around, that could be an X and a Y coordinate. Um, and that's kind of what I plan to do here. So what I'm going to do, and we could do this actually before the realize instances, is we are going to use a store named attribute, which is a node that I haven't been using much, uh, but Ben BBN19 told me that it's faster than just adding a group output and everything. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to capture the spline parameter. In other words, we're saying I want one of my axes to be as we go up the spline. We're going to take the factor and we're going to call this UV1. That's our first coordinate. And then for our second coordinate, we're going to take the quadrilateral store named attribute. It's actually also going to be the factor, but in a different uh, reference, uv2. And now those should both be stored. So let's see what that looks like. And I guess we could only look at the planks for now to make it simple. Um, so uh, what I want to do is I want to bring in these attributes. So I'm going to use an attribute node. By the way, I, I'm fearful that the microphone won't last the battery for the whole thing, but we'll see. 
So we're going to use UV1 and it's going to automatically import from this store named attribute. And uh, I guess we need to view the applied material version. So you can see this kind of is a Z axis coordinate and we could have just done it like that since it goes vertically, but it does account for the curvature. And then for the second attribute, UV2, we have a kind of a radial thing as it goes around this, which might break a little at the uh, caps, but whatever. We could add a separate coordinate system for that as well. So what we could do is we can combine these. So this is actually going to work for our wave texture now. We combine these, use this as a coordinate system. Let's see what that looks like. That looks pretty good. And you could try swapping them to get a different effect. <laughs> That's not the one we want, though. So uh, now our wave texture is more evenly uh, distributed. So we take this, apply it to the base color. And now we have kind of a wood grain. And I want to work on this grain to make it look better. So you could uh, mess with the scale, the detail, the distortion, whatever. I think the main thing we want to do here is uh, apply a bit of a distortion to our noise. Because it kind of looks like wood, but it also kind of looks like a watermelon rind again. So I'm going to mix in a bit of randomness. You could use anything as a random source. I'm going to use a noise texture. And you can see this kind of swirls the texture a bit. And as we add roughness and detail, that's going to make it look much more like a decayed uh, wood. So this is what it looked like before and after. And you can uh, control the strength of this uh, distortion. Okay, we're going to take this. We are going to mix. Um, what are we going to mix in? Well, I guess before we mix, we should pick two wood colors. So instead of going from black to white, it should go from like a darkish red barrel color. And it kind of depends what wood you want it to be made out of. But I think this looks pretty realistic um, to a, a nice black. And you could add an intermediary color to get a pop of, uh, of extra detail. That is up to you. Uh, I'm going to just have a simple gradient and also uh, I'm going to now mix in, and this is what I was talking about before with the uh, random per island. We're going to mix in uh, this to get a uh, different color for each plank. And we don't want to just like mix it like this because it makes it gray. Uh, we want to multiply uh, these two together. So some of them are going to be darker, some of them are going to be brighter. Um, as you can see, if anything, I want the average to be a bit brighter. So I'm going to bring this up. Okay. So we're multiplying by this uh, black and white uh, gradient in some sense, okay? So this could be our plank, um, and there is more we could do to this. So like to get a bunch of free detail, we can send this through a bump node, and this is going to give us normals. Um, we could also up the roughness, add some dirt and stuff like that, but I think this is a good start. Um, now that we have this wood material, uh, let's kind of reuse it on these uh, tops and bottoms because it's basically the same thing. I saw some barrels are made out of planks that go like this. Of course, we didn't model it that way. And some of them just have a circular cut out piece of wood, um, which is what we are going to go for. So I think what we can do is we can just take the planks material and apply it to this and this. I oh, know that's the metal. We want to find the tops and bottoms. There we go. Um, the reason this looks a bit weird is, again, it's using our coordinate system that doesn't apply here, our UV1 and UV2. So I'm going to make a duplicate. I'm going to call this caps, and this is going to be for our tops and bottoms. And for this, instead of our coordinate system, we can use a, I think we can use generated coordinates. Let's see what that looks like. So generated coordinates kind of looks good. Um, I'm just going to play around with the scale a little. I think, if anything, it needs to be more tiny, in a sense. Um, so, and I guess this random per island isn't that useful. So I'm going to mix this with the color black a little and find a happy medium, something like that. And then for our coordinate system, I'm going to scale it by using a scale vector math. So I'm just using all kinds of techniques here. That looks pretty good. Uh, if anything, these uh, lines are a bit too well-defined. So we could bring up the scale here 
and here to kind of break up that pattern. And I want to make it a tiny bit darker. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, finally, we just need to make a metal material. Um, and for that, we need to, again, apply a material thing, make a new material. I'm going to call it metal, and we're going to apply it to both of these. So metal material here, here, and let's uh, make a fresh material. Uh, this is going to basically be a BSDF with metallicness set to 1. So now you can see it's a bit reflective. Turn down the roughness if you want it to be shiny. And let's add a tiny bit of rust uh, to our barrel. Uh, so to do that, I'm just going to use a noise texture, uh, which will look like this. It can use generated coordinates. It doesn't really matter. And you can plug that into the roughness. And that's just going to add a tiny bit of variation. If anything, we can up the detail and also add a bit of a color ramp for a higher contrast feel. So something like this. And now you can see parts of it are shiny, parts of it are not. If anything, some of it is too shiny. So I'm going to bring up the shiny part like that. Um, and now we have some rust, which is still a bit too intense. So I'm going to bring it down a little. I like the look of that. Um, now, we the whole point of this is it's procedural. So if we change the seed, it's changing our planks but not kind of the random coloring. So I want to kind of fix that. So final thing I'm going to do here is with our seed parameter, I'm going to clamp this to the nearest integer by rounding down. And we can then uh, store this also as a named attribute. But we need some uh, geometry for context. So I'm just going to bring this all the way down. We're going to call this the seed. So basically what I'm doing here is I, I want to say as we randomize the seed, I want to also randomize this uh, random per island parameter. Um, so we are going to, let's full screen this. We're going to take the seed, the one that's rounded, bring it into uh, the shader editor. And we can now uh, go to the plank material. And instead of just a random per island, we can send this through a white noise, which, by the way, is a cool way to make a colored barrel. <laughs> uh, I thought this was cool when I was playing around with it. You can make a nice rainbow barrel. Um, of course, we want this to be the value. And I'm going to set this to a four-dimensional white noise uh, so that um, this can be controlled by an attribute, that attribute being the seed. So let's see if that works. As we change the seed... You can see it's also now changing the color. If anything, this is again a bit too intense of a uh, look, like it's uh, dyeing them a bit too much. Uh, so we could just send this through a color ramp, a color ramp right here, uh, making the dark planks not as dark, something like that. And there we go, we have a fully procedural barrel. So as we change the seed, it changes the color distribution, uh, the plank shape, we can also mess around with the uh, number of planks and it's going to work procedurally um, and all that. So thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Hopefully you learned something about shading. If you didn't, you weren't paying attention. Tom signing off from New York City. And uh, yeah.